That's it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I am Reverend Sonia Ingebrigtsen, and I'm blessed to be the pastor of uh, Community of Hope, United Church of Christ, and the Madison Christian Community. And on uh, our whole behalf, I want to say welcome to each of you who are here live via Zoom whether you are um, watching um, our live stream on YouTube or whether you're seeing the recording somewhere else, whether you're local or whether you are a distance away, I wanna know that you are welcome here. You are welcome here with uh, a welcome that is wide and wide and wider still. It is about Christ's wide welcome for us, God's extravagant love that leaves no one behind. We hope that you will feel welcome here at home, that you'll be uh, listening and watching for where God is at work and speaking to you in this worship, and that it will be a blessing that you carry forward from this time. So with that, I wanna invite um, Betty, one of our co-moderators, um, to offer her welcome and um, lead us through announcements. I welcome you all along with my co-moderator, Tina Hogel. Uh, Today, um, we have, first off, I'd like to thank the people who are participating, especially in today's service, Howard uh, for the music, and Pat and Corky and Mike for as liturgists, and of course, Pastor Sonia. 
Um, I also would like to um, have us have a little report on the special fund. Uh, Howard, as, as he's able to do um, for amounts under, I think it's $250, made a contribution from the special fund to, for school supplies with the hope, of course, that schools will be back in session in the fall. Uh, and that he reported to me as well that there's $1,625 remaining in the special fund. So while we were concerned about the balance a few weeks ago, it has, as it usually does, has grown. And if you are aware of needs in the community, as there are so many, please do either contact Tina or myself or Pastor Sonia uh, and then we will raise them at, uh, is as our usual pattern uh, at the next church service and be able to vote on them. Usually we have a two week, uh, one, week one week waiting period. So then it's a two week process. Or if there's a, an urgent need, uh, we can uh, waive that rule as well. Um, our new pattern for uh, announcing birth is, is also that you're supposed to be in touch with one of us, uh, either Sonia or Tina or myself. And so we do recognize that the birthdays that we're aware of are Pat, who's having a birthday tomorrow, and our son-in-law, Andrew, who had a birthday last Thursday. Uh, and for any of the rest of you who were not aware of or, or friends or relatives of yours that we're not aware of, we want to join in singing happy birthday or ha happy anniversary to them as well. So do let us know if you have requests from the special fund. Uh, for future services, or also if you have birthdays or anniversaries you want us to recognize. But we recognize all of them, whether we've named them or not. And we'll sing happy birthday, happy anniversary. Before we start singing, I just have two uh, quick announcements. One is for the worship team. We're meeting tomorrow at 930, and you should have um, emails about that. And also the um, Dane Sanctuary Coalition's big read of uh, the Death and Life of Ida Hernandez, that book group, um, will be meeting on Thursday and that information will be available at the church. So with that, let's uh, sing happy birthday to people, happy anniversaries. Happy We're going to unmute you all in just a minute. The peace of God is with you all. This peace that is ours during the Easter season and every season of our lives. Peace. 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 Everybody. Peace, Simon. Peace, peace. David and Frida. Nice Mary. to see you. Peace, Mary. Peace, Julie. Simon. Peace, Jing. Peace, Dave. Peace, Mike, Diane. Peace, Roger, Christina, Tina. All right, get your last Oh, David. Hi. Good morning, David. Good morning. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey, don't have Freddie. All right. There's never enough time for sharing the peace, but you can visit a little bit after worship, too. Just want to remind you where we are in our um, church season and that. Easter is not just a day, but it is, in fact, a whole season when we remember that Jesus' spirit lives on in each one of us. This season, we're following um, our ancestors' traditions of worshiping, um, of eating meals, and sharing the stories of the liberating work of Jesus. And we're doing that from our homes because of the, so uh, the physical distancing that we're having to um, uh, uh, engage in for the well-being of the whole community. But we remember that the temple of our worship is in our hearts. It's not in the sanctuary. Um, we don't have to be in a building. We don't even have to be all together in order to be worshiping our God. So um, with that, I just wanna remember last week, we talked about um, 
the metaphor of trees for our faith and that trees have through their roots this ability to connect with one another and they are in fact a whole community the forest is a community and then we saw something really interesting about um, it's called canopy shyness so if you look up from the ground to trees and certain species you'll see that their branches and leaves don't touch and that's to protect themselves from storms and from um, diseases and so forth. And it just was kind of a, a fetching metaphor for our time of pandemic where we have to distance socially. So many of you shared images of trees with me. And so um, we're gonna listen to the song Heart Wide Open that we've been um, listening to each week. Keep your heart wide open, though the waves wanna push you round. You've got to keep your heart wide open until your faith brings you back to solid ground. So as we listen to that song, um, we'll see some images of trees that you shared and some that I have um, to share as well. Keep your heart wide open though the waves wanna push you around mm, you gotta keep your heart wide open till your faith brings you back to solid ground Mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Though these waves wanna put me around. Though the waves wanna push me around. I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Till my faith, till my faith brings me back. Bring me back to solid ground until my faith brings me back to solid yes, ground. We gotta keep, we gotta keep our hearts wide open. We gotta keep our hearts wide open. So let's take some time in addition to that song to center our hearts as one. Take a deep breath and let it out. Place your hand on your heart and feel the heartbeat. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation. Help us to take this time to center on you for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. So let's hear this assurance of God and we'll sing it to the tune of Amazing Grace.
Let's take another deep breath. Making sure our shoulders and any tension we feel in our bodies is letting go. Take another breath. God's touch is within us. Between us. And around us. As close and as real as our heartbeat right now. This is how close love is to us always. Let's imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. And we offer a prayer song of letting go. have a candle and brought it to worship and haven't already lighted it, I invite you to do that now. As we remember that another metaphor for Christ is as our light and our life. Another way of reminding us that we are standing on holy ground wherever we are and that the light of Christ is with us always. So I didn't see any children yet in our um, Zoom time, but there might be some kids that are watching later. And some of you bigger kids um, might be interested in watching this too. So first we're gonna see a little video from Sesame Street, courtesy of Sesame Street. Today, I wanted to go outside and play with Elmo at the park. But my mommy and my papi said that I can right now. It made me feel really, really... Do you ever feel frustrated? Or sad or nervous? Yeah. Well, my mommy showed me a way to calm me down if I have big feelings, a little feeling. It's called Betty Bree. Hey, I can show you how to Betty Bree. Okay, everybody. All you bread in three doodles like this. And slowly breathe out through your mouth like this. Rosita, have you noticed that we're doing some of this deep breathing, like Rosita's belly breathing, when we do our time of centering and worship? Today, we're going to hear 
one way that we talk about Jesus as being a kind shepherd, one who always takes care of us, even in hard times, just like Jesus takes care of and loves the sheep in his care. The shepherd leads his flock to green pastures so they have good food to eat. He leads them to places of clean water so they can take a drink when they're thirsty. So what's the good shepherd have to do with belly breathing? Well, our lungs and our ability to take a deep breath to relax is one of the gifts of our bodies. A little bit like the grass in the pasture and the water are gifts to the sheep. But if the sheep are led to the pasture, but they won't eat and they don't, they won't get the nutrition that they want and with the nutrition that their bodies need. And we have the gift of our lungs, but if we don't use them to help us experience what we need when we're stressed, Jesus, the good shepherd can lead us to what we need, our lungs. But we have to say yes, or maybe we would say no to the gifts that are offered. So belly breathing is one of those gifts that's already given to us like the green pastures or the still waters. Will we take a bite to eat or take a bit to drink? In the heart coloring page from the bulletin, or maybe hearts that you want to make yourself, you might use your hearts to, in each heart, draw a situation or a feeling that's stressful or makes you afraid or frustrated. And then practice saying yes to the Good Shepherd by belly breathing that feeling and see what happens. Your worry and your frustration or the situation that makes you afraid that's inside that heart. Remember, there's a border around it. And that's like the heart that surrounds you from God. God's love is always with you, no matter what situation is in the midst of that heart. So let's listen to a Bible story about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that Mike is going to read for us. All right, so this is John 10, 1, 10. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who... Uh, the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the, the gate for him, and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy, didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life so that they could live life to the fullness. Good, Mike, I think you're muted. For these words of life. Thanks be to God. So we're going to listen to uh, or, uh, or watch, I guess, a version of Psalm 23. Um, this is one that you have to watch on your screen because it's not spoken, it's on cards. So um, make sure that you can see your screen and we will listen to and watch a version of Psalm 23.
The second scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. And God added daily to the community those who were being saved. For these words of life, thanks be to God. Community, as we practice these gifts of worshiping together, of eating meals together, of praying together, of making sure that everybody in the community has what they need, this is the kind of community that people um, want to say yes to. And so we will continue to do that because that is, uh, that is what the church is supposed to be about and the gift that we have to share with others. So we'll move on to the, another part of this scripture that we've been hearing week after week, and that is about eating together. And so we will be um, doing a communion. So if you have something, I've got a cat who wants to come to communion. If you um, have brought your, um, your bread and something to drink, we remember if you don't have any, you can, you can grab some later. But as Jesus was with his friends for that very last time, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to all of his friends and he said, take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. When you eat it, remember me. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all of his friends to take a drink. And he said, this cup represents the New Testament and you promise that I've given you that even after my death, I am with you. Jesus said, whenever you eat and drink together in this way, remember me. This is the body of Christ, the bread of life, the food for your journey, and this is the cup of blessing for you. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the green pastures and the still waters of our lives, which you've given us in part through this gift of the table of communion, where we can eat together and drink together and know your presence, binding us into one body of Christ, nourishing us for our lives, and feeding our spirits for this gift of being together to remember you. We give you thanks. Amen. So we will get ourselves ready to um, sing our hymn. Howard can go ahead whenever he's ready.
going to diverge from our usual pattern uh, of a sermon followed by a brief time of individual reflection. At least we're going to give it a try. It's a new use of our technology, so we'll see how it works. We're going to spend about 10 minutes together in small groups to talk about some reflection questions, and I'll put them on the screen before I break you into groups. You might want to write the questions down because once you're in a small group, you'll see each other and not the screen. If you're watching on our live stream on YouTube this morning, or if you're watching the recording at a later time, I encourage you to take the reflection time yourselves, either for individual journey, journey journaling or for conversation with others in your home, and then come back and rejoin us for prayer time and the end of worship. So let me show you the questions for your groups to consider. How do you recognize the care of Jesus, the Good Shepherd? And how easy is it for you to feed in the pastures and drink from the still water? That how easy is it for you to So we pray and hold in God's love and light those who have health needs this day, including Ken, Peter's brother Dick, Lisa's mother, Yvonne's sister Linda, John's sister, Mary, Christine's son Nick, Ellen, Anna's sister-in-law Estella, and all those with chronic health concerns, including Marge, Kathy, Helen, Betty, Christine, and Jean. We hold in God's love and light all those who mourn, including Acacia on the death of her cousin Barb's husband, and Dave on the sudden death of his mother, Marvis. We pray also and bring into God's heart all the ways that the coronavirus impact is impacting us, the lives of those we know, and those whose names we will never know, for those who are ill, for those who have died, for those who have lost loved ones, for those in our community who are on the front lines in healthcare and other essential services, including Mike, Jane, Wendy, Gina, Karen, Martha, Beth, Ken, Julie, and Magna and Magda, and for all who are at risk as they care for others or provide essential services. For communities of color, especially Latinx and African Americans who are experiencing coronavirus at four times the rate of white residents in Wisconsin and for queer, trans, and non-binary youth who are at greater risk now for violence in their homes since they're in that, since we are in the shelter at home time. And for all who have lost jobs during this pandemic or whose lives have otherwise been made more unstable or dangerous. 
We pray for every place of need and every person in need that the guidance and care of the Good Shepherd may be experienced and shared. And we celebrate now this day with our Muslim, uh, Muslim siblings who are celebrating Ramadan in these holy days. And we pray with gratitude for every place where we catch glimmers of the resurrection and the refreshment of green pastures and fresh water. And finally, we pray for Pastor Nick and our sister congregation, Advent Lutheran, and for our MCC as a whole, as well as those in our MCC community who are on our prayer cycle this week, including Christy and Roger, Peter and Sandra, Julie, Julie Chris and Paul, Al and Lindy. Actually, I think we prayed for those last week, so we'll just get them prayed up double. And for this week, we pray for Taylor and Kathy, Sue, Anne and Marty and their children, Hannah and Nicholas, and Jeff and Sarah. All these and all the prayers that we have in our hearts, we add into God's love and light trusting in God's care, in the care of the Good Shepherd. And so now we'll hear a prayer read by Pat Eddings. It's actually a prayer that um, uh, Pope Francis wrote, and we heard it last week in the context of some video slides. And so we'll hear the words this week, just the words. Listen as we speak and pray. So Pat needs to be unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. A prayer for our earth. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation to recognize that we are profoundly reunited, profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Amen. And we're going to be um, concluding our prayer time with the prayer of Jesus. And there are some words for this in your bulletin, but you're welcome to use your own words. And if you would like, you're welcome to join me in the motions for this prayer. So I'll be speaking it um, a bit more slowly than we might otherwise so that you can follow along. Everyone will be unmuted. And um, so we can just hear the the um, beautiful cacophony <laughs> of this prayer. Our loving God, God. Our loving God. In heaven. hallowed be in heaven. Heaven. Your, name. Thy name. Thy name. your kingdom come, your will be done, done. on earth, earth. earth. as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive, and forgive us, us. Trespasses. trespasses and lead us not to deliver us from, from, from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Oh, Amen. Remind you that even though we're not together to collect an offering, that our ministry is still alive and well, and we are um, doing ministry among ourselves as, as um, the community of faith. But we're also um, doing ministry and outreach beyond our walls. So there are three ways that you can um, continue to give your offering and pledges. That one is to send it to the church office. Uh, the other is to have your institution write a, a check um, and send it to us. Or you can uh, do an online giving option that you can find on our uh, website. So as we listen to Howard's um, operatory, I wanna invite you to be thinking about where have you noticed the generosity of God these days? And what kind of response do you feel called to, uh, to provide in response? So let's listen to Howard's operatory. So with that, let's offer our uh, praise. And we'll do this in, uh, I think we can do this with everyone unmuted. Let's give this a try. I'll, I'll say uh, a line and I'll ask you to repeat our offering of praise. We know Jesus is present among us. We know, we know Jesus, Jesus is, is present, present among us. us. <laughs> 
even in this very home. Make it really hard to even focus. Even in this, this very this home. home. We will not let fear be louder than love. <coughs> not let fear, fear be louder than love. love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. But with, with glad, glad hearts and rejoicing souls. souls. We will sing God's praise. We will we'll sing, sing God's, God's praise. praise. For we are Easter people. For we are, we we are, Easter, are Easter, Easter people. 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 Ask you, oops, here we go. I'm going to ask you to now move on to this offering of goodwill. And in the past weeks, we've been talking about um, how we might offer goodwill out to others. But this morning, I want you to take just a minute um, and maybe something will spark from your time in small group reflections is take a minute to think about how you're going to offer yourself some goodwill. These are hard days for us. So how might you allow yourself to experience the care of the Good Shepherd? How might you allow yourself to be led to the still waters? Or when you're led to those waters, what can you do to help yourself take a drink? So we'll just take a minute in silence. And you might write down a commitment that you want to make to yourself this week about how you can share some goodwill with yourself. If you need more time to think about that, that would be a good project um, after worship and something to think about this week. And of course, you have an assignment. This week, I'd like you to take a picture, take a photo of something that restores your soul. And then we'll put that in a, a thread on the Facebook page. Or you can send it to me if you don't know how to do that. Um, or if you'd rather, you can write a brief poem or a brief paragraph about something that's restoring your soul these days, and you can email that to me, and then we'll find a way to share those next week.
receive this benediction. God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God is right beside you, whispering, peace be with you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but in joy. This is the heart of the matter. Amen. Uh, we gonna have time, and no matter how hard it seems to be, we gonna make it. Never gonna turn the sun on me. Climate changes and disease. Let me down on my knees. There's a world that's lost in pain, looking for the sunshine of the rain. in danger, trying to help the people they can. So it's going down in America, and the same all over the world. And fought through so many battles, and then we're going once more. And I said, 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 Thank <laughs> you. 